Hey, Matt Russell here with another Photoshop tutorial. Today, I wanna just talk about and focus on the clone tool, the clone tool. It is crucial. If you can master the clone tool, you're like light years ahead and on your way to making money with Photoshop. Clone tool. Uh, really, what it all comes down to is three things. One, setting up your document right. If you don't set it up right, you are already guaranteed to probably have to start over at one point. Set it up right from the get-go so you don't mess up later on. Number two, always lurk on big detail first. Lurk. <laughs> work on big detail first. And number three, work on small detail last, okay? Set it up right, big detail, small detail, that's it, you've got it locked in. First thing you wanna do after you drop in the image is go ahead and just double click the image hit enter, so now you can edit the layer. Um, then second, add a new layer, which is down here, and then go to clone stamp tool. It's gonna be pointless if you're on the pin tool trying to make this work. You gotta be on clone stamp tool. Uh, if you see the pattern stamp tool, which kinda has like a checker thing, click off of that, go to clone stamp tool, and then you're getting, all, you're almost set to start. Then at the top here, make sure you say current and below. Uh, the reason why I like to do this is it creates a non-destructive layer editing because if you're just clone stamping the snot out of an image, guess what? It's destroyed. You can't go back, okay? Make sure it's current and below. And the reason why we're doing this is so you edit one layer and the layer below stays permanent. It's good. It's your original layer. You're not going to mess up and you can go back anytime you're set, okay? Current and below. Now you're set. So go to clone stamp. One thing I like to do is just zoom in. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with uh, big detail. So first thing was setting up right, we're set up, we're done, we're good. Big detail is with the clone stamp, all you're doing is just painting over the image. So big detail, it's easy to edit with. Um, again, how you make the brush bigger and smaller is just the open and close brackets on your keyboard. Uh, so big detail, obviously I can just hold down alt, sample from this line over here. I like to start on a line. I don't know, it's just my preference. Move over here and then continue the line and just paint out this guy's head, all right? Use the ocean, it's already looking better. Um, here's another line, I'm gonna sample that. Continue the line over here. Sample down, good there. Uh, that's big detail, that's really <laughs> it. it already he's pretty much gone out of the ocean of the mountain that's it big detail um, and the reason why we set up photoshop this way is i'll show you watch click layer one you can always go back you can always go back all right welcome back i as you can see i finished off all the big detail i got rid of the water i just added in the lines that uh, the texture, the boardwalk. Now what really we're gonna do is just focus on the small detail. So the issue is uh, with the clone stamp, it's super easy to get the big detail, like oceans, the scenery, um, the background sky, that's simple. If you have like a frisbee flying in the background, you can just edit out super easy, no real thought behind it. Uh, you just sample from a different part of the sky and click over it. Um, but with the small detail, one thing you really have to focus on is making sure that it looks right. Uh, if you're trying to sample, and here, let me just, let me give you a practical example. Let's say I keep my brush real big, and uh, let's sample this uh, bar to go all the way up. Okay, great, let me sample this and move it here. Yeah, that doesn't look good. <laughs> so hit Control Z. You really have to make your brush as small as you can, and zoom in as much as possible, and work on filling the deep, the background. So for example, this, I'm just going to show this part and then I'll skip ahead to, uh, in, in a second. So I'm just going to try to fill in just barely the edge of this rebar bar. Uh, that way we'll get some detail going. Okay. There we go. So the goal isn't to try to get everything done at once. The goal is just to get the small, important parts done right now. Uh, another aspect is this line going across. So I obviously want to try to get this line in solid. So boom, 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 connected. Uh, this area, again, this is kind of big picture. It's easy to do. You just sample from the brown part 
and just paint it in. Um, small detail stuff is all about borders, edges, uh, making sure it looks good. So fill this in. Uh, let's continue with this edge all the way up. And awesome, it looks like it connects up here. So let's just keep connecting it. And golden. All right, and that's pretty much it. Uh, just work on the big detail, the little detail, and make sure you're set up because at the end of the day, you're able to hit that eye toggle on and off. Uh, it looks like we did a pretty good job. This area was kind of hard right in here. Uh, something I want to show you how I did was, let's go ahead and put this back in, uh, make a new layer, and I want to show you how I got out this knee in particular. Uh, it really kind of gave me the most trouble out of everything simply because it is in such a precarious space that I really want to use the lighting of the metal behind it rather than trying to, uh, for example, sample from this side. It's, it's obviously not the same shadow. It's not the same fuzz. It's not the same. Everything. It'll stand out pretty bad. Um, and at the end of the day, you want your photo, people to look at it and not wonder why is there a certain spot that's blurry? Why is there a certain spot that's like duplicated 50 times? Um, I really see a lot of amateur mistakes where, uh, let me give you an example. Let's say this water throughout here, um, if I was going to sample, some people sample like this. They'll sample and then they'll paint it and then they'll paint it and they'll sample again and they'll paint it and they're not really paying attention to the water and the water ends up getting sampled 20 times throughout the same thing because you needed that boat. Uh, my suggestion is sample across the hard edges and the spots behind it, sample somewhere else. Um, for, so for example, the water, I just kind of try to paint it on. The more times you sample from one area into another area, if you just keep sampling, 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 it gets uh, really blurry and you really lose that film grain, that natural film grain in that image. Uh, so if you zoom in, you can see, yeah, there's pixelated, but there's also this like really um, film-esque uh, dust that's on the top and you don't want to uh, clone tool it so much that you have to like somehow duplicate in film dust anymore. I'd rather just sample naturally. Uh, so getting rid of his knee uh, was kind of an interesting spot because I had to sample from so many different areas and what I ended up doing was duplicating this bar a couple times over here. Um, so just kind of coming up, bringing this back down sampling this over and then making it so I didn't have to have this same three dots over and over and over. Uh, so this obviously I just went like that, brought it from the middle. And so I, I want to show you if you keep sampling from the same area, it's just going to cause it to duplicate over and over and over and over. So there you have it. This is my final image. I'm proud of it. It looks decent, and you'll never be able to tell he's there. Well, that's Matt Russell with Photoshop Tips. I'll see you later.